the final five seconds. Everybody on their feet here in the Boston Guard. And everybody will be looking for JoJo White. You can bet on that. Let's see if they try and pull a little switch here and maybe go with Havlicek. But the only two good shooters right now, because Nelson's taking out of bounds, are White and Havlicek. Collins, remember, is fouled out. So is Scott. Here come the Celtics. Clock will start when it's touched. Havlicek touches it. It begins. Three seconds. Hondo off the glass. He's got it with a second. John Havlicek won it. It's over. No, no, two seconds to go. The Boston Celtics, but the clock should have run out. Or did it have two, there are two seconds on the floor. to go in this basketball game, Brent? The ball went in with two seconds to go, and the clock has to stop on a made basket. The Phoenix Suns will get the ball with two seconds to go. A this game is Richie not Powers. over. Richie Powers is in a fight with a fan right here in front. Referee Richie Powers was assaulted by a fan. They pulled the bore off. There are the cops out in the middle. They got fans out in the middle of the floor. The Phoenix Suns trying to get it cleared to get the two seconds off. Here's hey. Richie Powers now. Don Murphy is over there with him. We've got two seconds. You're right, Rick. Murphy just told me. Murphy has verified what you said. Two seconds left. Two seconds left in the game. They've got to clear the floor. They've got to bring the Phoenix Suns back. It's not over yet. We've got two seconds left in this game. Here goes now John Havlicek. Motion. He's driving. He goes right up. Out. Makes an almost impossible shot as he almost hits the floor. Banks it in. Two seconds to go. The ball had gone through. The clock ticked down to one, but there was two seconds when the ball was in the basket. 111-110. Double overtime. It's going to take us a while to get this floor cleared off. Murphy told me there were two seconds Believe Absolutely, me, we've got two, two seconds left in this basketball game, and Tommy Heinsohn is back. They know it right now. Everybody's aware. The players have been told, but the fans aren't aware in the Boston Garden. They've got to get the fans off the floor. He's got to get off the floor, play the two seconds. John Havlicek making a super play for the Boston Celtics, hitting an extremely difficult shot. The Phoenix Suns not, of course, wanting to pick up a foul they would have been in the bonus situation so they had to pull back off John made it and then all heck broke loose there was Bedlam out there on the floor the fans ran out and then they were anxiety to congratulate the Celtics because they thought the game was over someone attacked Richie Powers but we've gotten order restored Rick and Brent you can't say too, can't say too much about these officials they have worked one Super Bowl game and a fan attacking official to me is just unheard of I don't buy that at all now let's see if they adjusted one second I believe is the adjustment Murphy had said two they talked it over Ricky is over explained it to John McLeod Mindy, what is the rule on that is it when the ball goes in the basket or after it comes through and clears as soon as the ball goes in the basket for an obvious score, Rick, the clock is supposed to stop. And it looked to me as if there was no seconds. Now what I see happening over there is the officials have checked with Bobby Rago, who is the third official, and he called one. Now Tommy Heitzel wants to know where the ball is going to be put in play. Now it was after a basket, so it should be put in play underneath the, the hoop. Do they have a timeout left, or have they used both of them? West ball out there, pleading the Phoenix case with Powers. They're going to call a timeout now. If they have a timeout left, they will call it. Do they have one left, Mindy, or have they used both of them? They do not have any timeouts left. I would not be surprised now if they will call an extra timeout to gain the distance and have a technical foul assessed. Let him shoot it. Possibly score from down there. That's exactly what they've done, Mindy. They have all the time out. They have to get it at half court. And this way they have a chance to at least tie the game and send it to a third overtime. Right, but they could never score from 94 feet. They may from half court. 111-110. JoJo White can make it a two-point basketball game. He does. Now the final second of play here in the Boston Garden. 
Phoenix will get some court position. They're huddling around Tommy Heinsohn. What about the foul they've got to give right now, Mindy? They can give a foul. I don't think they will, Brent, because it's one second to play. Awfully difficult to get a good shot off. That clock will start as soon as it's inbounded and it touches somebody. There's Heinsohn directing the shot. Suns are over huddling with John McLeod. This has been one of the more incredible evenings in the history of championship play in the NBA. Leading by 22 points, the Boston Celtics found themselves tied once and then twice. And now we come to the end of the second overtime with a couple of the most incredible turnarounds I have ever seen. It is John Havlicek who put the Celtics ahead. Then the Suns took the technical to get court position. Curtis Perry wanted somebody to stand back. Won't start until it's touched. They'll have to throw it up. Garher, turn around, shot in the air. It's good. It's tied again. I don't believe it. Garfield heard at the buzzer, threw one in outside. We've got a third overtime in a Boston Garden. It's 1-12, 1-12. Unbelievable sequence. First it was Havlicek, then it was Garfield Hurd. All tied at 1-12. At the flag, and one second to go. Curtis Perry gonna look for Hurd. There's the toss in. Hurd gets the ball, turns. The clock still, no zero. It's off his hand, it went to zero. Good call. Nothing in the basket, ties it up. 